what up? So today I'm going to show you how to make dye out of fruits and veggies and then use them to tie dye a shirt. So this isn't my hand. I'm over here, editing the last video. So Inz is going to help out and film this one. So first thing you do is well, make some guacamole. Ainsley put her sweat, tears, and blood into this guacamole. Literally her blood. Look at this. Ow. Oh my goodness. Please don't cut your thumb. Your, your thumb? But next step, let's glue it back together. Woo! Mix that blood, baby. And with your guacamole done, you're going to have a bunch of pits and skins. Scrimmage, pits versus skins. Um, what? Wash off all the avocado so it's just your pits and skins. And I have this cute little portable heater oven thing. And you throw it in a big old pot. Cool, 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 cool. Look at that cute little spinning boy. Add some water. So the less water you use, the darker your dye is going to be on the shirt. The more water you use, the lighter. You just bring the pot to a boil and then let it simmer on a low heat for 45 minutes or an hour. Where the longer you go, the darker your dye will be. Next, you'll just strain out all the big chunky chunks, pits and skins. Pits and skins. And look at Ainsley. Look at her on the pot, being so discreet. And with that, you're gonna let that dye sit overnight. So there's a bunch of different things that you can soak your shirt in before you add the dye to help the dye stick. And we're gonna try out six of them. So we took a shirt and just cut it up into six different pieces. First one we're gonna try is soy milk. And the ratio is one part soy milk to every five parts water. So you just mix that in with the water, throw in the shirt, let it soak overnight, and then hang dry it for, it said a week. Ooh. We didn't have a week, we only did a day, so that might taint the evidence a little bit, but I don't know. So next, soda ash. This is technically used for like regular dye, like synthetic dyes. We wanted to test it out and see if it would do anything on natural dyes. So it's just like one package for every gallon of water. Soak it for 20 minutes, and then you're good to add your dye. Next, we want to try salt. The ratio for this one is one part salt for every 16 parts of water. Bring the water to a boil, add your fabric, and let it simmer on a low heat for an hour. Next, we tried some white vinegar. For this one, you just add one part vinegar for every four parts water, bring it to a boil, then add your fabric and let it simmer on a low heat for an hour. Next, we tried alum potassium aluminum sulfate, and I actually had to order that one off of Amazon. So for this one, you take the weight of your fabric, and 20% of that weight is how much alum you use, which equals to about seven tablespoons per shirt. But you're gonna wanna check your math. So you just add enough water to cover the shirt, get the temperature of the water up to 180 degrees, which is about a medium low setting on your stove, and keep it at that temperature for 45 minutes. We then took ours out and let it air dry overnight. So this last one is the same as the alum, but we added a little bit of cream of tartar, which is supposed to help with the evenness of the dye and then also the brightness of the colors. And for this one, you just add 6% of the weight of the fabric, which ended up to be about two teaspoons for every shirt. We read everywhere that the alum and cream of tartar was the best, so we just ended up prepping all of our actual shirts that way, hoping that that's gonna be the best. <laughs> so we just grabbed all six of those fabrics, and put them in the avocado dye, one after another, which kind of shouldn't have, we should have just done them in separate bins, not just in the same dyeing pot, because they kind of got cross-contaminated probably. Hopefully that won't make too much of a difference from what I've seen, because again, I'm doing voice recorder, so I've already seen like the results. Each piece of fabric did have very different results. So cool. And we're gonna let them sit in that bag for 24 hours before we wash them and see uh, how well the dye stuck. Meanwhile, I wanted to make a bunch of different dye colors, one for every color of the rainbow. So starting with red, we used beets. So for the beets, we just used three beets and put enough water in the pot to just cover the beets. That made enough dye for two of these little jars. So with onions, you actually just use the pills. So we used two big old bags of onions. Again, just enough water to cover them up. We didn't want to use a whole lot of water because we wanted to keep the dye very pigmented. So for yellow, we just used the skins of an orange. We think we used too much water for this one, and you'll see later. So on the safe bet, if you're going to be dyeing, like tie dyeing, use less water the better. 
But yeah, so for greens, we actually use spinach. This one had too much water, so we tried to keep it on the stove for longer. So next for blue, we have some red cabbage. So this one, if there's one dye that you want to make a lot of, this would be the dye. It was super cheap, we did two heads, and it literally made like two gallons. It was ridiculous. And it's super pigmented. And last, we have blueberries. That's going to make uh, the dye purple. So that's fun. Blue for purple. Red for blue. And look how cute these are. So cute. So as a general rule, what you want to do is use one part chopped up fruit or veggie to two parts water. But because we are tie dyeing them, try to use less water to hopefully get it more pigmented, more dark. So that would work in these little squeeze bottles. So let's try it out. So the first one is to this little traditional spiral. And then we want to see if it would do anything different if we applied it to a wet shirt. So left is wet, right is dry, and ooh, missed. So again, right off the bat, kind of like my last video with the bleach, it was easier for the dye to stick to the wet shirt initially. It kind of went all over the place with the dry shirt. And then when we pick it up, we wanted to clean off the bottom to not contaminate the front when we flipped it over. We really should have used like a, like a rack to do this on. That's what usually you do so that it doesn't get all mixed up and messed up. But meep, these are gonna work, they're gonna look good. And we're gonna see how it looks, bubble pop. So with those done, we just put them in a bag, lock zipped it up, and let them sit for 24 hours. I also tried one on one of my shirts. We'll see how that does. Pretty stoked with how it's already looking with the screen print on there. So for this next one, Ainsley just accordioned it, folded it up like accordion style from the bottom and then from the side, accordion. And just added a bunch of rubber beans. Rubber beans? Boom, 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 boom. And just added that blue dye. It was really cool because it goes on like that pink purple color, but when you rinse it out, it looks really cool. So I'll be sure to film rinsing this one out. So cool. Oh, I'm dizzy. So, just cleaned it off and started with another one. Did another one of these shibori, shibori, shibori folds. Shibori, shibori, roll call. Then she just added some rubber bands and then did the blue. No, well, that's not blue, that's red. Hello, Brian. Do you know your colors? I don't think so. Red and orange. It's purple and orange. Oh my gosh. That's a blueberry and onion shirt. Again, I thought it'd be cool to cut up a piece of shirt. Why well, do I want to say a piece of shirt? A shirt and then put it in some of that dye. Like I said, we have a ton of that red cabbage dye. Is that red cabbage that turns up blue? All the colors are messing me up. Yeah, so we're gonna see if keeping the dye on longer makes that big of a difference. Oh, I recognize those hands. Hi, it's me. I didn't want Ainsley to have all the fun. So I just tried this one, scrunched it down from the middle, added some rubber bands. That will see how it goes. And my plan was to just like dye half of the shirt with that. What color is that, Ainsley? Purple. That one's purple. That's the blueberry. It's messing me up. So I put that white side in a little baggie to help protect it because I was making a mess. This would have been easier if I had like a bowl to soak it in, but I just made do with what I had. And then the next shirt, I wanted to use the avocado dye. I think it was kind of spoiling. It started to stink. It kind of smells like tomato soup. But we're gonna let that one sit and stew. And Ainsley has two more shirts. Give it a little nipple twister in there in the center of the chest and then tie it up with rubber bands and then stripe it with red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. Cool. And this next one, you just throw down a shirt, rope it until it's a nice little clumpy clumps, add some rubber brands or something all over little clumps and add some purple, add some red, add some blue and we're good. So cool. I'm excited to see how these turn out. But before that, pass me a something to say. So, I know you. You're watching this video and you're, you're like the kind of the creative type. So I know that you have maybe something you want to sell. Maybe you have a portfolio though online a video that you're stoked about that you want to share, or some creative writing, it was a blog post, you have something to share, and it needs to be shared. Yeah, honestly, it needs to be shared. Like, that's like one of the biggest part about creating. You can create all you want, but the moment that you like actually share it to the world is the time that it gives you more purpose and it like gives you more fulfillment. Cool. Didn't mean to get, to get into this, but here we are. A nice segue to today's sponsor. Whoop, whoop. Squarespace. So they have the tools to get whatever is in your head out and shared with other people. Another cool thing that kind of comes to mind is the community aspect. So I recently launched a site called The Collective Curious. One of the tools that I was really stoked that Squarespace had was a form 
we're gonna have you guys submit like stories, projects, whatever you wanted that you're really pumped about so that I can put it into a zine that will be coming out February. Thank you for all who have subscribed to that, by the way. It's coming. And also cool thing about Squarespace is they have subscriptions, which makes it easy to sell subscription-based products, which as a creator is super nice because that will create reoccurring revenue, monthly, weekly, whatever you have it set to. You gotta get that rent paid. Honestly, you gotta get that rent paid. But also creates customer loyalty and that community that I was talking about before. If you have something to share, share it. We need to hear it. We need to see it. We need to experience it. And a website makes it real. You can actually go to Squarespace right now. I know you've probably thought of something while I've been talking and you can start making that website literally right now. I hope you stay till the end of the video, but you can do it right now. Like, I'm not stopping, I can't stop you doing anything. That's completely free. And then remember, when you do wanna purchase, let's say your website, your domain, whatever, go to squarespace.com backslash mood and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. You can also use the coupon code schmood. So cool. All right, so here are the shirts. So the one on the left is the dry one, the one on the right is the wet one. You can tell that the wet one, like, the spiral is like kind of more faded, it's not as splotchy. And then also when I rinsed it, the colors completely changed. I was having a really hard time with the reds. So like even with this one, uh, like the pink is supposed to be red and it just completely went away. The orange and the purple, the two colors that stayed the best. This color is super rad. This was that blue color that was made from the red cabbage really loved how they turned out. So this shirt has two of the best looking colors in my opinion, or I guess the ones that stuck the best were the darkest, the onion and the blueberries. But the colors completely changed front and back, loved it. I feel like time didn't have like a whole lot to play. Here's the 12 hour versus the zero. 30 minutes, 12 hour and an hour, two hours, four hours, eight hours, and then 24 hours. You kind of see a difference, but really, you know, I think the thing that makes the biggest difference is what you treat your shirt with. And all of these were treated with the Lum and Cream of Tartar. And I feel like that held the dark colors? I don't even know. I just really couldn't hold on to the red. This one held the color pretty well. But you can see at the end, my favorite one with the avocado was actually soy milk and vinegar. So this one turned out super cool. Um, like again, that red, that was the beat. And it's so, so faint. And the yellow is so, so faint. But I actually really like how pastel that one is. This one had the blue, red, and purple dye. And when you wash it, we're gonna lose all of that red. The red dye doesn't even really show up. Some of the purple's there, but that'll probably come out in a second wash. And yeah, I think it'd be cool to make a follow-up video where I make like the tie-dye pattern using all those different kinds of things to treat it beforehand because as you can see it did make a big difference so cool all right so be sure to like and subscribe go ahead and hit that bell notification and yeah thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for our patrons